continues after this brief message. On November 22nd. Good evening. You may think you've heard of every scam a smart con artist can pull, but tonight you're going to witness firsthand one of the biggest and ugliest cons you'll ever see. It was the brainchild of men and women who live in an all but secret society, a world where crime is a way of life. But that's not this society's biggest secret. Tonight, Chief Consumer Correspondent Lee Thompson takes you into the world of the Travelers, a place few outsiders have ever heard of, much less seen until now. 911 emergency. <laughs> What's wrong? A frightening cry for help to 911. Somebody was in my room when I came in. Uh, did anybody hurt you? <laughs> it is Halloween night, 1992. A man dressed in a Dracula costume is seen wandering around the Caribbean Beach Resort at Walt Disney World. According to police reports, 20-year-old Wanda Mary Normile had been hit in the face, tied to the bed with duct tape, struck repeatedly with a wooden club, and raped. By all accounts, it was a brutal attack. Crying, sobbing. Uh, I remember actually having to kneel down on the floor to look up to her because she would not make eye contact with me. The duct tape all in the back of her, her hair that had been cut. It is this image, the haunted look, that Orange County Sheriff's Detective Tom Harrison remembers. Looking at, at her, I, I had no doubt in my mind at that point that, uh, that there was a victim. Normile told police she was vacationing at Disney World with her 10-month-old daughter and her sister. What no one knew, not the hotel staff, not the police, not Disney, was that Wanda Mary was no victim. She's a traveling con artist about to pull off one of the biggest scams ever. The scam was for me to claim that I was beaten, robbed, and raped at a hotel at Disney. And what did you hope to get from that? Money. A lot of money. Wanda Mary says it was her brother, Jimmy Burke, who actually hatched the idea after they watched a TV show on the lack of hotel security. It was decided that I would be the victim because I'm four foot nine, and at the time I weighed about 98 pounds, I was real thin, and that I was a good actress and I could pull it off. So you were about to give the acting performance of your career? Yes. And police say the crime scene was very believable. It was dark, the room totally ransacked, blood spotted the sheets. The effects of the beating clearly visible, welts, bruises, cuts, and that glazed look and test confirmed sexual intercourse. You said that you'd been raped and it looked that way. How did you pull that off? Well, a friend of my uncle's, which I've known all my life, and we're the same age, we grew up together. Well, I kind of went over there and to his house and um, had sex with him. And to set it all up, Earlier that night, her brother Jimmy, dressed up as Dracula, tried to talk his way into her room, telling Disney staff he left his key and wallet behind. He never got in, but he hoped it would be remembered as if there was a lapse in security. I let him in the room, and me and him ransacked the room. It looked like somebody go went through all of our luggage. And um, he taped me, duct taped me to the bed, and beat me up and left. Beat you up? Yes. What was going through your mind is your brother was beating the tar out of you. Everything that I could buy with the money when we settled from the lawsuit. With the evidence that I had, uh, I could only go one way, and that was that this had happened. And playing yet another role was Wanda Mary's concerned sister, Jessie. She's the one that filled in the details for the police. The hospital believed that you'd been raped? Yes. Disney believed that you'd been assaulted? Yes. What happened? It was all believable. There was no flaws at all. It seemed like the perfect con. And then, the sting. Wanda Mary Normile sued Disney for $3 million. 
blaming the company for inadequate security. And just as they had planned, Disney offered to settle, never knowing it had just been stung by a notorious crime family. Police know the faces of these people well because they have busted them for counterfeiting, shoplifting, and every kind of con game. What they don't know is that they are all part of a huge clan that travels around the country, targeting the elderly in home repair, paving, painting, and roofing scams. Were you involved in a roofing scam? These men and women are members of a secret society that calls itself the Irish Travelers. Police who follow them say many in the clan are out and out thieves. If there's a scam out there, they've tried it. Don Wright chronicled the criminal life of Wanda Mary's family in a book recently published. She learned very quickly, she learned very well, and she became more skillful than most other travelers her age. And you were going to make one of the biggest heists ever by a traveler. Oh, yes. Everybody was going to talk about it for generations. It was going to be... It was going to be... A, I was going to be a legend. And that was important to you? Very important to me, yes. Wanda Mary was born and raised a traveler, her birthright guaranteeing her a place in a world you and I can't enter. It's a closed society. It's not known and it's not meant to be known. A secret society with its own language, Kent, a mixture of Gaelic and English. Like whenever I see somebody that I think is a traveler, I'll look at them and I'll say, Romanicho? And what does that mean? That means, are you a traveler? That's what it means, in one word. Travelers have a strict code of honor. Protect the clan and keep your mouth shut. Why are you talking to us? Because I feel like the public needs to know. The traveler story goes back to the 19th century. Tinkers run out of Ireland for unsavory deeds took up business here in the United States. They split into different clans, crisscrossing the country looking for jobs, living out of trailers and motels. One group of about 2,000 travelers has settled here in South Carolina. Most have little education, dropping out by the eighth grade. Yet in Murphy Village, the signs of their success are everywhere, in the homes they build, in the cars they drive. Their customs unlike any you are ever likely to see. Dateline obtained a copy of this home video. Very young girls dressed in high heels and designer gowns paraded before the community in a coming out ritual. She'll have a certain song she lip sings to. And then when she does that, and then she'll dance on the runway, she'll change two or three times, you know, and show off her clothes and her body, what she looks like. Marriages are arranged. A young girl's family may pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for a good provider. It is not unusual for first cousins to marry. And as Dateline first reported this spring, the bride's often very young and the groom's much, much older. How young are these girls having babies? One that I knew of that had a set of twins, she was 11. 11 years old? 11 years old, she had a set of twins. It is a way of life totally foreign to most of us, but a way of life Wanda Mary knows well. Come on, girl! A way of life where kids play con games. Wanda Mary says she was just a little girl when her uncle handed her $20 for a special treat. He said, did you know what you just did? I was like, went to the store and got candy. He said, no, you just use Gammy Glon. What's Gammy Glon? Translated to English means counterfeit money. And you never knew it? No. He said, wasn't that easy? I said, yeah. He was like, you want some more? I said, yeah. <laughs> they don't do anything else from the time they're born until the time they die, except uh, run scams. And they're extremely good at it. Wanda Mary admits to having 28 different aliases, running repair scams and shoplifting. And she says it was a great life. You know how dope addicts say they get that rush? Well, I got the same rush off of walking out with something for free. I didn't steal it. They gave it to me because I talked them out of it. And she got away with it over and over again until the big one the multi-million dollar scam of Disney. With so much money at stake, Wanda Mary says the sisters started fighting about control. 
she was going to be my financial advisor. The check was to go in her name. And I said no, because I knew what she was going to do. She was going to get the check in her name and take it, all of it. Police had reached a dead end when Detective Harrison heard Wanda Mary's sister, Jessie, wanted to talk. She wanted to turn her family in. Jesse outlined the entire scheme in a tape-recorded conversation. It happened so fast, I had no time to think about it, other than I knew it was wrong. I knew I didn't want a part of it, but I was in it. It just totally took me by surprise when, when she came forward with all this. Nearly a year after that 911 call for help, a case of rape suddenly became an investigation of fraud. She snitched on you? Very much so. Oh, yes. Yes, bad. They're very good actors, uh, very convincing, and very methodical in their schemes. And in the end, what happened to the players in this con game? The scam police say may be the most sophisticated sting the travelers have ever tried. Well, Disney kept its money and doesn't want to talk about the whole affair. And Jesse, the concerned sister who turned Wanda Mary in, all charges were dropped and she returned home. Her brother Jimmy, the instigator and perpetrator, died of AIDS before he could be arrested. And Wanda Mary, the one who took the beating by thinking of all that money, she pleaded guilty to grand theft. She would spend the next 18 months behind bars. You were very good at what you did. I have those trusting eyes that they can look into and they're like, oh, okay, look, at this nice young lady trying to make a living. Wanda Mary's now out on 20 years probation and is paying off fines of $24,000. And she claims she is starting a new life with her daughter. The time in jail, she says, convinced her to change her traveler ways. If you weren't in your present circumstances, do you think you'd still be out there? Yes, I would. Have you really come clean? Yes, I have. And I can say I have with all the confidence in the world because I know what I've got and I have too much to lose. And she says all that with those trusting eyes. As for those travelers who seemingly have found a safe haven in their home state of South Carolina, the attorney general there says no more. In response to two earlier reports Dateline did on the travelers, South Carolina has created a task force to investigate the gang. The attorney general promises to take a special look at the welfare of those child brides. This is Dateline Tuesday for November 12th, with reports tonight from Chris Hansen, Rob Stafford,